be here, uh, here in Peterborough to announce our candidate for the forthcoming Peterborough by-election. My name is Richard Tice. I'm the chairman of the Brexit Party, which we only launched just a matter of literally four weeks ago in Coventry. And since then, it's fair to say we have taken the political world by storm. We've had rallies and events and walkabouts all over the country and in front of thousands and thousands of people, live streamed to millions and millions of people. And our social media has been reached by tens of millions of people. We are, without question, the fastest growing grassroots political movement in this country, possibly seen for a generation, because there's no question that people in this country, uh, they want change, and we stand very clearly on the slogan, we're looking to change politics for good. Because this country has been humiliated by uh, an, a, a Prime Minister that has shown complete incompetence in negotiating the Brexit deal, uh, by a Cabinet uh, that has tried to say, and by members of Parliament from both parties who are now trying to cobble together some extraordinary coalition of politicians against the people. Uh, but the European elections are happening on the 23rd of May, and uh, we fight them to win. We've got a fantastic selection of uh, candidates for the European elections, and I've no doubt that they are probably the highest quality of people who've ever stood for public office in a generation, and that's something that we're very, very proud of. Now, before we bring in our, our candidates for the by-election, we've got a small video, hopefully, uh, to show if the technology works. My name's Mike Green and I'm the Brexit Party candidate for Peterborough. I moved to Peterborough when I was young, grew up in Peterborough and went to Brettonwood School. I've built businesses in and around the world but when I had my first child I decided to move back to Peterborough and I've been here for the last 20 years again supporting charities, supporting young entrepreneurs at the Future Business Centre I never wanted to get into politics, but politics is broken. Our conser Conservative and Labour MPs have lied to us and have betrayed us, specifically in the Peterborough area with Fiona Onasanya. I'm asking you on the 6th of June to vote for me, the Brexit Party, to get a politician in Peterborough that wants to work for you and is passionate about this wonderful city. Fun. My name is Mike Green. There we go. <coughs> um, <coughs> so. Uh, you know, Mike Green is a fantastic, successful local entrepreneur. He is typical of the high quality of people that we've got standing also as candidates uh, for the European elections. We have just recently also uh, opened the application process for candidates uh, across the country for the general election. Uh, Mike is successful, he's an entrepreneur, he's an achiever, he's got a proper can-do, make-things-happen uh, approach. And that's why, actually, for the city of Peterborough, he is without question uh, the highest quality person amongst all the candidates for this by-election who can do the best for the constituents of Peterborough. So without any uh, further delay, Mike Green. Thank you. It's always lovely to hear nice things said about you. And uh, you saw the video before I've ever seen it. So uh, well, welcome. Good afternoon. Um, if you'd have asked me even 10... 14 days ago, if I expected to be here making a speech like this, the answer would have been no. Um, but times are changing, and, and it's time to change for good. I, I moved here when I was 11. I was really excited about coming to Peterborough. Uh, from where we lived, suddenly this was a city that had green and open spaces. Every house in the new development areas was within a few hundred yards um, of a green space. There was plenty of parking, uh, and I went to a new school. Um, it was, it was a tough school and you know one of the things I'm passionate about is education because uh, Diane Ray, a, a leading academic from Cambridge University, once described schools like mine as a demonised depository for social waste. Children should never be labelled like that and I'm, I'm passionate about some of those things. Uh, and so I worked hard when I was at school, ambitious if nothing else, because I wanted to look after my mum and give her things to pay her back for what she did with us. And that took me away from Peterborough. And I don't mind saying that when I was a, a, a teenager, early 20s, I had a big drive to get away because sometimes you don't see the, the outstanding environment in which you live. But as, I, as the video said, the moment my wife and I have been together 30, 30 31 years, uh, we had our first child and having travelled all around the world to build business, 
It might seem strange, but Peterborough was the place that felt like home. Having travelled around the world, I realised there's great places and there's terrible places in every city, in every country. And there's more good than bad in Peterborough, which is why we chose to make that our home. I've always been passionate about politics, but I'm not a politician. The event that Nigel and Richard and the Brexit party ran the other evening is the first time I've ever been to any political event. So in the same way that any businessman or, or anyone talks about politics, I've always been passionate. But it's reached a point where I couldn't sit back anymore. Uh, this city, like this country, can do so much better. Um, there's so much to celebrate, but often if you ask people about Peterborough, they say, isn't that where you go to renew your passport, off it, your passport, the passport office in Peterborough? But, you know, let me tell you what I think about Peterborough. We're within an hour and a half of four international airports. We're 46 minutes on the train from King's Cross, and by the end of this year, that will drop to 37 minutes. We've got a 900-year-old cathedral that takes your breath away if you go to it. We've got 3,000-year-old flag fen settlement. Uh, and the, con the city continues to grow. I think it's the second or third fastest growing city in the UK. There's lots of things that aren't happening here though. I was on the committee initially to get Peterborough its own university. Um, I never went to university myself, but having achieved a few things, I was asked by Anglia Ruskin, I was awarded an honorary doctorate, which is wonderful. It's probably the only way I was ever gonna get a degree. Uh, but I was honored to do that because I was passionate about education. But then I was passionate that Peterborough should have its own city, uh, own city university. And, and so I worked on that committee for some time and I thought that it had all been agreed. At that point, the combined authority had already invested six million pound. More millions have been invested, but now it's dragging along. We were supposed to have first students by this year uh, when we first talked, and then it got made 2020, 2021, 2022. So I think they need someone in, who cares about the city enough to not just talk about these things, but to make these things happen. As I said, I'm not a politician. I find it quite disgusting, in a way, a disgrace that this by-election even has to happen. The people of Peterborough uh, chose Fiona Onasanya in good faith that she would work for them, would deliver for them. And as I've said yesterday, she, I never saw her in this city. Even before agreeing to do this, tomorrow I'm speaking at a, a, a charity dinner, Wednesday I'm speaking at a charity dinner next week, and I'm always doing these things and business things. I have never once seen Fiona on Asanya. In fact, we heard more about her as a city when she was in prison than we ever did when she was an MP. Um, so it's time for change. It's time to talk positively about Peterborough and positively about politics in Peterborough. And the reason I support the Brexit party is they're the only party that, in my view, has absolute clarity of focus on what Brexit is. We need to run our own laws. We need to be in control of our own trade. <coughs> We need to be in control of our own borders. Uh, and people talk about prejudice. Isn't it more prejudice to say we'll give favoritism to people within Europe than to look out to the wider world, the Commonwealth and the like? Um, so I'm here today, it's the start of a journey. I believe, without any shadow of a doubt, that I'm the most passionate person that can deliver for Peterborough. I want to use my business experience to, to make things happen in Peterborough. I want to use my lack of political experience, if you like, I've obviously got great support already, but I want to use my lack of experience to question why things go so slowly in this city and to challenge why things aren't happening to make this a great city. And to me, it's the start of something that can grow over the whole of the UK as more and more people join the Brexit party, win seats for the Brexit party uh, and take us forward. Someone asked me yesterday, why am I standing for the Brexit party? And it took me back to a quote that I love, and it's really simple. If you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. And I can no longer fall for the lies, betrayal and deceit that our current political parties uh, give in this country. Um, now, I'm happy to uh, answer any questions you've got. Um, just before sorry. we do that, Mike, I just... Um We'll just let Nigel just say a few words. Um, Didn't even see you coming. Uh, I'm late, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well done. You're right. Thank you. Um, the earlier, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Nigel Farage, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Oh, sorry, I'm late. Uh, well, Mike is the third. Only the third time we've met, uh, but he clearly is incredibly passionate. Firstly, about Peterborough, but secondly, I think Mike has within him the sort of righteous indignation 
about what has happened since the Brexit vote, the broken promises through a general election, and indeed the broken promises when 500 MPs voted for Article 50 and we all thought we were leaving on March the 29th. It hasn't happened. The can keeps being kicked down the road. Uh, and Mike is a solid citizen who stood up and said, I'm prepared to take a stand. And we've got a great candidate. I'm very, very pleased about that. Of course, there'll be acres of speculation uh, about what can happen in this by-election. What we do know is that the Labour Party have been working the ground hard for the last several months because they knew this was coming. And we start with a couple of disadvantages. The first one is we only launched four weeks ago as a party, so we haven't exactly got much data on voters uh, within Peterborough. So we start with nothing in terms of electoral resource, but uh, what we do have is a European election campaign going on for the first half of this campaign, in which I think uh, we've got every chance of topping the poll. Uh, and what I also think we've got is a particular appeal with this type of candidate, somebody who's not been part of the two major parties, somebody who clearly uh, has never ever in any way coveted uh, a career in politics, and somebody who's doing it because he believes in it. And I think that is the kind of new politics that if we possibly can, the Brexit party will bring to elections at all levels in this country. So I'm not going to make any silly predictions this morning, but I tell you what I do know, just given the first day when we had people out putting out leaflets last Saturday and just talking to people in the city, in the villages outside. I think we're going to do very well. We are going to give it our best shot. And that's the best I can say at this stage. We will give it our best shot. Uh, and, and, and I think the Conservative and Labour parties will be very worried by the presence of Mike Green because we've got a candidate who is extremely well known and respected in this constituency. Gosh, things are moving quickly in British politics, <laughs> in the Brexit party, and indeed in my life. Mike, fantastic to have you on board. Terrific stuff. Going well, going well. Grab a seat and we'll do it from here. So, uh, any questions from anybody? Who have we got? <coughs> Just the back there. Go on, Rob. Hi there, uh, Joel from the Peterborough Telegraph. Um, when did you and Nigel first meet and discuss this? Uh, so it was a, a week ago last Sunday that uh, I met with Richard. I then spoke with and met with Nigel, uh, and we then had dinner on uh, after the event the other night, uh, a late dinner, uh, and agreed at that point uh, to to be the candidate. So before then, you never had any sort of serious discussions about doing this or getting involved in politics? Uh, I, I'd met Nigel briefly once before, um, uh, just a couple of days before, to, um, to discuss that. Yeah. You mentioned, obviously, Brexit is, is the key, but uh, yeah, yeah. what are your other issues that you are most passionate about to do with Peterborough? Yeah, so to do with Peterborough, I talked about the university. Um, what, what, what I look at in terms of university, education, um, is challenge. I talked about my school. It was a tough school. And you know what? With, with just eight GCSEs, I was probably in the top 5% of the results of that school. Um, and it was, a, it, it, it was a school where you were almost grateful to get through it. Uh, I've spoken at every school in Peterborough uh, over the last few years. If, if I look at the role that many politicians do, I've probably been doing some of those things for a long time anyway. But when I've spoken at those schools, what I realise is that it's almost not called cool to study. Um, so education is important to me. And, and the speeches I do are normally just before people do GSE, GCSEs or A-levels. I'm talking about how just a little micro-focus, 15 minutes a day on a subject can change a grade. A grade can change a, a door opening for a job. Uh, and that first job can set you on a trail. Uh, and so, to me, education is, is crucial. I want to make sure that our schools um, are really doing the best, uh, and then that culminates into our university. I know that there is a direct correlation with where people live and where they went to university, and they're the people who are often contributing most commercially to a city. Because we haven't got our own university, I don't think a lot of people move back here after going to university, and I think there's a bit of a, uh, a potentially, uh, we're losing great people from this city, myself included, when I first left. So the university 
uh, would be absolutely crucial uh, to me. And then generally, it's promoting what's amazing. I, I, I sit on the tube sometimes and see how it's great to live in Doncaster, great to live in different parts of the UK. And some of the organisations in and around Peterborough have done a great job of internally focusing on and blowing their own trumpet. But outside of Peterborough, we need to get the message across to businesses that this is a place to come. We have great people, we have hardworking people, and I want to attract more business to a really motivated, educated workforce uh, that can make the city as well known as it should be for all the right reasons. Just, just very quickly on education, obviously Peter has had its struggles, yeah. second bottom in the last three years. Yeah. You said the university hasn't come yet. What can you do as MP to try and improve standards uh, more than what's happened so far? Uh, well, one of the things that I think is obvious in politics today is that a lot of politicians, and certainly the two main parties, say they listen to everybody. Uh, I thought they listened to us uh, uh, when, when we voted for Brexit, and they clearly don't listen. Uh, I spend at least a third of my life with charities, with schools, with businesses, young entrepreneurs and people at a different stage of life looking to get into businesses. I listen a lot to people, and what I want to do is listen to what those issues are and make sure I represent the needs of this city, not my needs, the needs of this city in Westminster. And, and, and on Brexit, yeah. are, you a, are you a no deal man? Well, what is your sort of ideal outcome of where we are at the minute? Everything I look at in terms of my own background, I've run trading teams uh, in retail, I've been a trader, um, it would have been nice to get a more positive deal. But the moment that no deal was taken off the table, we lost all respect for us and we lost all of our negotiating power. So I absolutely, at this moment in time, believe WTO deal uh, or just leaving and then starting from a clean slate is better than starting from a really bad deal. And I thought that that was something the Tories had committed to, uh, that when they said again and again and again that no deal is better than the bad deal. And then once again, they betrayed us and they lied and what they said, they do. And, and just quickly, in terms of sort of where you live, because there's obviously concern of candidates <coughs> being parachuted, and you live around Peterborough now, don't you? I think Crowland area, is that correct? Yeah, Peter just Crowland. Uh, so PE6 is, is my postcode. Um, Peterborough is my town. I do, do everything here. We do our shopping here. We um, go to events here. Uh, I me mentor businesses at the behind the Peterborough football ground. Uh, it's the city that is my home and I'm committed to. Thank and it has been for the last 20 years and was for the 10 years of growing up. Anyone else? I think just, just to finish on the, uh, the issue of what the, the Brexit Party stands for in terms of the European elections, as Mike said quite rightly, we stand for a WTO Brexit. We had a press conference in London on Tuesday and we made it clear a vote for us is a vote for a WTO Brexit, but also that uh, a vote for us is also that our elected MEPs should then play a significant role in the future negotiating team because we have got, as I said then, I think the highest quality uh, list of candidates with their experience, with their expertise that I think has stood for political office in a generation. And that's at the European level we can play a significant role. And I think what you see in the quality of Mike here um, as the by-election candidate for, for Peterborough. Mm. Again, we've got someone who is a, a very successful, a real achiever. And you know what? A, a, an MP that has got that track record, that knows how to get things done, to make things happen, is a huge, huge asset for any constituency across the land. And it, um, we very much hope that Mike will be selected and he can play a massive role in making Peterborough uh, grow and grow and continue to succeed. Thank I'll you. say one thing on the national stage. Yeah. I just want to respond to one point, uh, a broader point, from uh, Mr Jeremy Corbyn this morning, who's been doing the Labour launch of their European election campaign, and he says that only Labour can stand up to the Farage snake oil. Now, this is interesting, because it sounds to me like he might be getting just a little bit rattled, because I've no doubt uh, that in the north of England, the Midlands, uh, cities like Peterborough, South Wales, there are millions of traditional Labour voters who voted Leave in the referendum, who are passionate about Leave, incredibly patriotic people. Uh, and I think what you saw in the local elections last week was that first crack beginning to appear in that Labour vote over this Brexit issue. Uh, and I think he's very, very scared of what we can do to his vote over the course of the next few weeks. And so he should be. 
You know, he's tried to play this sort of game of constructive ambiguity, where he sits on the fence, and it's neither one thing nor the other, but if you look at the MEP candidates standing all over the country for Labour, nearly all of them are Remainers who want a second referendum. And when the electorate clock that, the Labour vote is going to go down a lot further than it has already. And if, and if he wants to start talking about me, then maybe what he really ought to do is to take up my more than generous offer to have a public debate with him. Thank you. Any other questions? Otherwise, it just remains for me to say thank you very much indeed, everybody, for coming. Uh, it's fantastic to have you on board, Mike. And thank we're you. going to make sure that you have a fantastic job. So yes. Great. Thank fantastic. Thank Brilliant. You. Well done.